In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of long-term disability insurance in Canada. So if you're looking for a broad overview covering everything, you've come to the right place. Now, I've broken the video into five parts. These are, first, the long-term disability basics, two, the types of long-term disability in Canada, uh, number three, we're going to cover buying long-term disability insurance. Number four, we're going to cover how to file a claim for long-term disability. And lastly, five, we're going to, I'm going to talk a bit about some of the other types of benefits out there for long-term disability apart from insurance. Let's dive in and take a look. So let's start, start with some of the basics here. So first of all, what is long-term disability insurance? Long-term disability is a type of insurance that pays a monthly benefit to people eligible people who become unable to work because of a illness, sickness, or other type of disability. It is only available to eligible people, meaning you have to be enrolled in a long-term disability insurance policy or plan at the time you become unable to work because of the illness or injury. If you get qualified for these benefits, they're usually paid out on a monthly basis. So you get a monthly payment each month of the year, and these benefits can run for a certain period of time, but usually will go to age 65 as long as you continue to be covered under the plan. So second of all, second question here, we have how does it actually work? So how long-term disability works is, again, as I've mentioned, you need to be enrolled in a plan or policy. How people usually have that happen is you buy a policy yourself, an individual policy, or you enroll in a policy through a group insurance product or plan that you have through your work. Sometimes people aren't aware that they even have long-term disability, but it's good to check if you have a plan that pays for medical, dental, that kind of stuff, it's possible that it also includes group long-term disability coverage. So once, you, once you're covered under a plan, if you have to go off work because of an illness, then there's a certain period of time called a waiting period, which can be 17 weeks up to a year. But once that waiting period passes and you're still continuously unable to work, the, you are eligible to apply for long-term disability benefits under the plan. What happens is you just send in an application by filling out forms and the insurance company will review them and decide whether to approve or deny your claim. If they approve the claim, they start paying monthly benefits. If they deny it, you have a chance to appeal to them and eventually going to court and all kinds of things like that. Next, we get a lot of questions about what medical conditions would qualify you for long-term disability. The simple answer here is that any medical condition could potentially qualify for long-term disability. It's not so much the medical diagnosis as it is the disability and impairment with your ability to work that comes from the illness or medical condition that you have. So it's possible that a medical condition for one person could be relatively minor and they're able to work, but for other people, it's more serious and they're not able to work. So with any of these cases, it's not really the medical condition. It is what are the symptoms, impairments, and problems that you have arising from that condition. Now, doesn't mean that medical conditions are not important. It will Medical conditions serve to identify like what types of treatment you should be getting and whether you're going about trying to recover in the proper way. Another important concept is the idea of total disability versus partial disability. Total disability in the context of these insurance claims mean that means that you are completely unable to do the duties of your own job or of any other job. You might not be, it might not mean that you're completely incapacitated and can't live a life and walk around, but as far as like doing the work duties and showing up to work, you're incapable of doing it. Partial disability refers to a situation where you're still able to work, but maybe you can't do all the duties, or that you're still able to work, but you're less productive because of your medical condition and your income has dropped by about 20% or more. In those situations with partial disability, there can be insurance benefits for the, for that type of situation if this type of uh, if this type of clause is included in your plan. Partial disability is not as common as long term uh, as a total disability, so you'd want to double check your insurance plan to see if you have it. Finally, one of the last concepts you're going to want to know about is this idea of own occupation versus any occupation. With the majority of long-term disability plans in Canada, they will cover you for a period of time as long as you're unable to do your own occupation. That refers to the type of work that you were doing at the time you became disabled. It can mean with the type of employment with your own employer or with any other similar employer. It doesn't mean your specific job, just your type of job that you're doing. Now, for most plans, that will cover you as long as you, they will pay you benefits as long as you can't do your own occupation for up to two to three years. 
There will come a point though where this definition changes and the criteria changes under the policy. After that point, benefits will only continue if you are able to show that you're unable to do the essential duties of any other occupation. Now, it doesn't always quite mean literally any other occupation, but it does broaden it out beyond just your own type of work to include similar work that you're suited to by your age and, and your work history and this type of stuff. So it does broaden the field a little bit and you have to now show that not only can you no longer do your own work, but you can't do other work as well. Now let's move on to part two here. This is the types of long-term disability insurance that is out there. Now there are three types of insurance products, insurance, long-term disability insurance products that we see in Canada. The first are called individual insurance policies. These are individual disability insurance. This is the type of plan where you would buy it directly from a broker. You would pay for it. You'd be the only person covered under the plan. These are the most expensive and the best plans in most cases. Often they'll cover you just for your own occupation for the rest of your working life, which is great if you have that type of plan. Um, but these plans are not common. You, you have to initiate the process by buying it directly from a broker. So usually these plans, you only see them with self-employed professionals like dentists, doctors, chiropractors, lawyers, and others. Sometimes business, self-employed business people will get these plans as well. Now, the second type of plan, which is the most common in Canada, is called a group disability insurance plan. These group, uh, group disab long-term disability plans are included within the overall group uh, plans that are sold to companies. That would also include things like medical, dental, uh, whatever else, travel, uh, ex other expenses and things like that. So often buried within all these other things is short and long-term disability. So you're going to want to check to see if your employer's group plan, medical plan includes long-term disability. So in order to qualify, you have to be enrolled in the plan itself and to be employed at the time that you employed with the employer and working at the, up until the time when you became uh, unable to work because of disability. If, you, if that has happened, then you would be covered under these plans and they're great plans if you have them. Now, number three is kind of a catch-all. It's called special purpose plans. Now, these include a couple things here. Let me just take a look. Yes, they include things like creditor disability insurance. This is disability insurance attached to loans, visas, that kind of thing. There's also critical illness insurance. That gives you a one-time payment if you have a critical illness that's listed, like a heart attack or a stroke or things like that. It has to be listed in the schedule of conditions, and if you have that event, they just pay out a one-time payment of money. You'll often see those plans. You can buy them individually, but they're often included with group plans as well. The next one is dismemberment coverage. That is a type of coverage where if you lose an arm, a finger, a toe, an eye, there's a certain amount of money paid out. So it's similar to critical illness, but not quite the same. But again, you're going to usually see this type of coverage with group plans. Sometimes you can have it privately, though. And last but not least, there is travel insurance. This is something you're going to get if you're traveling out of the country. It will cover medical expenses you incur abroad. It's not technically a disability insurance, but it's kind of within the same realm. So I wanted to throw it in here. Next part is part three. We're talking about buying long-term disability insurance. So when you're buying long-term disability insurance, there are some things you wanna look for. Now, in some cases, the buying is that you're purchasing it from a broker and that's when you have the most control. If you're just enrolling, the other scenario would be you're enrolling in long-term disability with your employer. Now, even in the situation where you're enrolling with the plan that your employer has, you, you often will have options you can check option A or option B. Um, and there's usually price differences and it may cost you a little bit more. In my experience, a lot of people just take the cheapest option because they're gonna save a couple dollars a month on their paycheck. That is often, and not often, that is always a mistake. You should always choose the best possible. If you're if enrolling in your group long-term disability, check off the most Cadillac version that you can get, okay? And you will thank yourself later on if you ever have to make a claim. Things you want to look for if you're buying or enrolling in a plan, you want to get the benefit amount to cover the highest percentage of your income that is possible. So if you have options to cover 65, 75, 85, take the highest amount that you can get. Now you have to be able to afford it to pay the premiums, but again, double check and see what the difference in the premiums is if you move from 60 to 70 to 80, sometimes it's not that much. It might be a, less than a dollar a month or a so, dollar a month or something like that. So check it out. It's worth having as high as you can get. 
Second part is you want to know, like, what am I signing up for here? Does it cover my own occupation for life? Does it cover my own occupation for a certain number of years and then any occupation? You want to double check what you're signing up for and what's covered. Ideally, you want own occupation for life. If you can get that, those are more expensive. But if you're getting into this any occupation, make sure to know that that is what you're paying for and that's what you're getting. You don't want to be caught uh, by surprise on that. The next one that trips people up is the benefit period. So this is how long the benefits get paid. It doesn't automatically go to age 65. There are some terrible plans out here, usually sold to truckers and motorcycle riders that cover you for like two years or three years or five years. So you need to know the plan you're signing up for. Does it cover me to age 65? You don't want one of these short-term plans. They're not, they're not really worth it. I mean, they pay you for a little bit, but for what you're paying for them, you could get a plan that goes much longer for hardly any more price. So be very wary if you see plans where the benefit period is not to age 65. That's what you want to be looking for. Now, the next question to ask is, are these benefits going to be taxable? So when I get paid these disability benefits, do I get taxed on them federally, pay income tax, or do I get them tax free? Very important to know that, and you should be asking that when you're signing up. The next one is becoming very important right now, is whether your benefits have a cost of living increase adjustment. That is a huge thing right now, given all the inflation. If you don't have this, you get if your benefits are approved and your benefit amount is like $2,000, it's going to stay $2,000 for the next till you're age 65. So inflation will eat that away and it will lose value over time. If you have inflation protection, each year your benefits will rise according to inflation, usually up to a maximum of 3%, which is normally good. But in this day and age, inflation is much higher than that. Uh, at least at the time of this video, but you want to have that inflation protection. Next, you want to ask, is there going to be a partial disability benefit in here? That's great to have if it's there. And also you want to know if certain medical conditions are going to be excluded, because if they are, you want to know about that and make sure you're not caught off guard if you have to make a claim. Part four, I'm going to go over quickly just how you file a claim for long-term disability benefits. So you're enrolled in a plan, you've had an unfortunate situation where you've had to go off work, you've been off work for the waiting period, which we'll say is 17 weeks. How do you file a claim? You file a claim with any kind of insurance company the same way. They want you to fill out their specific forms, and there are typically three forms. Not typically, they're pretty much always three forms. One for you to fill out, one for your doctor to fill out, and one for your employer to fill out. So you want to ask them to send you this application package. Normally you'll get it from your HR department, your employer. You're gonna fill those forms. You fill out your form, get the one to your employer, get the one to your doctor, and then get them all into the insurance company. Once the insurance company gets them, they assign a claim representative who will to your case. They'll give you a case number or a claim number. They call it a claim. It's kind of a weird word, but that's what it is. They will review the claim, get back to you. Usually they want more information. They may wanna interview you over the phone. Then they'll make a decision to approve or deny your claim. If they approve your claim, they will you'll get a back pay of any money owed up until then, and also month-to-month -month benefits going forward. They may require other things like continuing to give medical updates, but that's a good situation. If they deny the claim, which does happen fairly frequently, then they will sometimes tell you the reasons why, and you will need to appeal that decision. An appeal means that you're asking them to reconsider the decision and to overturn it to approve, and, and, and by the way, approve your benefits. So usually we'll do at least one of these appeals directly with the insurance company themselves. If they deny it again and you still feel that it's not fair that they've turned down your claim, you can then take your case to an external decision maker, an external appeal process, which I sometimes refer to as the legal appeal because it's you're bringing a legal case against the insurance company in most situations. And in that case, you can still negotiate with them. They still may approve the claim, but ultimately if you if you if they don't approve it and there's no settlement, it will go to a judge who makes the final decision to approve or deny the claim. Part five, last but not least, I just want to give you a, an idea that there are other types of long-term disability benefits out there other than just your run-of-the-mill long-term disability insurance. There, there's a few categories here. So the first big one would be provincial long-term disability benefits, uh, provincial benefits, they're, they're long-term disability. It would be provincial assistance like ODSP, AISH, PWD. It's called different things in different provinces, but it's a provincial benefit that can be paid to you, but it's going to be based on uh, your disability, but also your family income level. So these provincial benefits aren't available to everybody. You have to have a family income under a certain threshold, so that can cut off some people. 
Number two, you got the Canada Pension Disability Benefit. This is through the federal government for workers who've paid into the Canada Pension Plan and have suffered uh, an, a, a disability and inability to work. It, it's, it's very likely if you've been a longtime worker up to the point that you had to go off work for your disability that you could qualify for these benefits as well. They'll only cover you if you can't do any occupation, not just your own, and that there's no possibility of you really getting back to work anytime in the foreseeable future. The next one would be workers' compensation. Each province has its own workers' compensation program. This covers situations where people are injured at work, but if you can get these benefits, they're some of the best in the country. Again, each province has its own agency that handles these, so they're very different, but you would file a claim through that agency, and if you can get these benefits, they're fantastic. And last but not least, we got the old veterans benefits. These are for people who've served in the Canadian forces, and there is a whole system in place to provide for benefits. It'll only cover benefits that you can link to a service-related medical condition or injury. But if you can, sort of like workers' comp, these are some of the best benefits out there if you can get them. That's it. This is a summary of long-term disability in Canada. If you have any other questions, please reach out to us. We, we can give free consultations through our uh, disability claim support people. If I ask you to, if you like this video, please go subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell notification to get updates of when these videos come out. And last but not least, head to our website, check out some of our articles, and subscribe to our email newsletter to get updates in the future. I'll see you back here next time. All the best.